أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against shaitan the rejected one I begin with the mighty name of Allah the most gracious, the most merciful May peace and salutations be upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family, companions and the entire Muslim Ummah the obligatory or the compulsory unity of the Muslims is a divine instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. In several verses of the Holy Quran, he emphasizes that before you even talk about your unity, Allah says in that to emphasize that his own unity is of utmost importance. Now let's visit a very important ayah of the Holy Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that very we have sent to every ummah a messenger and this messenger preaches or gives a message of his oneness without associating partners with him. Like in chapter 16 of the Holy Quran, ayah 36, he says, we have sent among every ummah a community or a nation, a messenger proclaiming that worship Allah alone and avoid associating partners with him. Moreover, besides Allah emphasizing that, you must always, always worship him alone without associating partners. He also emphasizes that he refutes the idea of he had offsprings. First, he says, don't associate partners with me. And second, he says, I do not have any son or any daughter or any offspring. This, he says, in the most popular verse, or rather, surah, that is surah in class. He says, he begets not, nor is he begotten. He does have a son. Furthermore, in the Holy Quran, he says, don't say three. Lata kuluta lata, don't say three. Now this obviously is in reference to the Christians who say three in one and one in three. In other words, when they pray, they say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So in this verse in the Quran, he says, Muslims, don't say three because I do not know was I begotten. And then furthermore, he says each and every Nabi, he was sent through one mode of transmission of the message. And that is Jibra'il alayhi salam. Now why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes that the message is from him, he alone should be worshipped without any partner? And number two, he says the message that I give to you through various messengers may other people use with them through time immemorial has been given through one mode. That is Jibrail alayhi salam. And whoever is an enemy of Jibrail alayhi salam is also an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is also an enemy of the messengers. Now the reason why he emphasizes on Jibrail alayhi salam is because he doesn't want people coming on the day of Qiyamah and saying, you know, I received this message from so and so. Or he doesn't want on the day of reckoning that one of the messengers will come disputing the messages of all the other messengers. Hence, he says, he is one. The messengers come from one source. The message is transmitted through one source. And now let's come now to today's talk. The oneness of the Ummah. We have seen the oneness of the message, messengers and Allah. Now let's look at the oneness of this Ummah. In the following popular ayat of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a secret to success. Now have you ever wondered why we are so fragmented? Whether it is in war situation, whether it is in businesses, or even in our families. We don't even talk in our families. There is so much disunity, so much fighting, so much chaos in our own families. We don't even talk to one another as brothers. 
You find children don't even talk to parents anymore. You find that relatives don't even, cousins don't even talk. Five years goes down the line. You have never even spoken to your cousin. You don't even know where your cousin stays. And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in chapter 49, ayah 10 of the Holy Quran, remember, the believers are but brethren. Therefore, make peace between your brethren and be careful of your duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you may receive mercy. Surah Allah, Allah, verily Allah has spoken the truth. So have you ever wondered why your business is not going well? Why your marriage is not going well? Why your association is not going well? I'm not giving you the secret here. Is that pick up that phone, call your brother, call your cousin, call your sister, call your uncle, and say, I'm sorry. But we are too proud. We are even proud, too proud to not even abide by the injunction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, the unity of you as brothers and sisters is of paramount importance. Do you know that Allah says, this unity is being more important than your salah that you are making. We are so concerned about making our salah five times daily salah, and yet you can't speak to your brother, you can't speak to your father, you can't speak to your cousin or your uncle. To move on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in numerous verses of the glorious Quran, Allah emphasizes over and over again the compulsory instruction on unity. Now, Allah says, when you are part of those who don't want to unite, He tells Ali Muhammad in a very popular ayat, that is in chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, ayah 169, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And indeed, those who have divided their religion and become sects, whether you call yourself a Sunni, you call yourself a Shia, you call yourself from the Barevi persuasion, or from the Jehovah in the station. Once you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat, He gives a warning, He says, Oh Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you for nothing to do with them. To be more specific, Allah says, Indeed, those who have divided their religion and become sects, you, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are not to associate with them in anything. Their affair is left only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then He will inform them about what they used to do. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells this beloved Nabi, anybody else who calls anything else besides a Muslim, you are supposed to withdraw from them. You are not supposed to associate yourselves with them. And furthermore, in chapter 30, Ayah 32 of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Those who split up their religion and become sects, each party rejoicing in that which is with itself, you've got nothing to do with them. Now, this is a very big warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, once you identify yourself as a sect, you are not part of the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But how many of us are identifying ourselves or oh, I'm a Sunni. We will say to call yourself a Muslim or oh, I'm a Shia. I come from Dioban. I come from Barelvi. I come from Malawi. I come from Turkey or Morocco. You are so proud of that, you are even scared of calling yourself nothing but a Muslim. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us against in the Quran. That the person who does that, you got nothing to do them with them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you are not part of the Ummah. Let's move on to the current scenario that is taking place in the occupied Palestine. We are worried that we are not making any progress in terms of victory. Why? Again, to revisit the Quran, where Allah tells us that if you want to see victory, first of all, unite your hearts. What is Allah telling us here? He's telling us that you are not gaining victory because your hearts are not together. To emphasize on this point, the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam rightfully saying, if one person as a Muslim is suffering in any part of the world, you are supposed to feel pain. He gave an example of the body. He says the body is one body. But in the door, one part of the body feels the pain. The entire body feels the pain. 
If your finger is cut, the whole body will never, you will have sleepless nights as long as that finger is feeling pain. So Rabbi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whatever is happening or the calamities that is befalling your own brothers and sisters in occupied Palestine, if you don't have an inch of pain in your heart, you are not part of the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at what is happening in, in the world around the Muslims, uh, like for instance in Sudan, in Kashmir, in Libya, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, the list is endless. All Muslim dominated countries. Look at the refugee camps. How many refugee camps do you know of that is not occupied by a Muslim? Almost 100% of refugee camps all over the world are occupied by who? Muslims. And the population of those refugee camps are occupied by who? Muslim women and children. And it doesn't even move us. He doesn't give him, say hello to our hearts. And yet, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, the Ummah is one. On the other hand, given these refugee camps dominated by Muslims around the world, on the other hand, you find Muslims, a certain select few, the princes, the kings, the sultans, the princesses, living a lavish lifestyle that your eyes has never seen before. A lifestyle that doesn't even raise an eyebrow. Look at what is happening, for instance, in Saudi Arabia. The king bringing the world entertainment hub to the Holy Land. He is even proud to say Saudi Arabia is going to be the capital of entertainment in the world. And Muslims who are keeping quiet. He is spending billions of dollars bringing entertainment like Hollywood or Bollywood or whatever. He says those are babies. I want Saudi Arabia to be the king of this kind of entertainment. The Muslim world is quiet. We don't even feel an inch of it. Billions are spent when the children in Yemen are dying of hunger. Those who are in the media, I see there's a couple of people in the media here. Yesterday, the human rights for the United Nations uh, World Food Pro Program. Now this is an organ, a branch of the United Nations that is uh, responsible for feeding those who are going through hard times in the world. They have withdrawn their help to the Yemenis. They are withdrawing us from the end of this year their help to the Syrians who are going through hard times. They are going to be withdrawing their help to Sudan. They are going to be withdrawing their help to all the Muslim dominated countries. And yet we are buying arms. Saudi Arabia is spending billions of dollars to buy arms. You know what is the funny part of it? Is that we are spending so much money buying all these arms, spending defending ourselves against who? You cannot even defend a child at your doorstep in Palestine with all those billions of dollars worth of armament, you cannot even defend a small, one single child against the Zionist occupiers. So why spend so much money? And yet, the babies and women are dying on a daily basis. And in conclusion, there is a tendency going around, since we can talk so much about this unity, it's impossible for the Muslims to unite. This is now what is happening around. This is the words that are going around. That it's impossible for the Muslims to unite. Because we are so fragmented that it's impossible. In other words, we are telling Allah that what you are saying in the Quran, in as far as the fundamentals of this unity, is all not true. We are actually going headlong with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says Allah, it's impossible because this is what Shaitan wants us to believe that unity amongst the Muslims is impossible. Now, two things that we have learned from this lecture. Number one, unity is obligatory. Because Allah says, unity is taken on the same breath as Tawheed. And remember, Tawheed is one of the pillars of Islam. So if Tawheed is a pillar of Islam, and you Allah says, Tawheed and unity is twins. And we dispute, say it is impossible. Which means we are breaking 
that one fundamental pillar of Tawhid of Islam. Number two, when Allah says it is obligated compulsory to unite with your brother, and you are so proud you can't pick up a phone call and say, I'm sorry, let's unite, let's embrace one another, and then we expect success. In chapter 3, I 103 of the Holy Quran, Allah says, Hold fast all together to Allah's court, to Allah's rock, and do not be divided into sects. And remember Allah's blessings upon you when you were enemies. Then He brought your hearts together. So you became brethren in Islam. So let's pray, inshallah, make dua that whenever we have disputes amongst ourselves, our families, our business partners, our countries, our politicians, let's make this favorite dua and make sure that Allah first unites our hearts and then we'll gain victory, inshallah. Wa maha alayha illa al-balaqul mubin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allah
اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد اخوه الايمان الاسلام دين الله الذي شرعه لعباده ورضيه لهم يقول سبحانه اليوم اكملت لكم دينكم واتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الاسلام دينا والاسلام منهج وصى به الانبياء وعشيرتهم واقوامهم ووصى به ووصى بها ابراهيم بني ويعقوب يا بني ان الله اصطفى لكم الدين فلا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون الاسلام ايها المسلمون ماخوذ من الاستسلام فنسلم انفسنا لله ونجعل له وحده سبحانه حق تصرف فيها وتوجيهها حيث اراد سبحانه يقول ربنا تبارك وتعالى افغير دين الله يبغون وله اسلم من في السماوات والارض طوعا وكرها واليه يرجعون الاسلام يا امه الاسلام ان يكون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو القدوه والقصوى لنا لقد كان لكم في رسول الله نصوة حسنة لمن كان يذكر الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا هذه القصوة توجب علينا طاعته وإتباعه حتى ننال رضاه سبحانه سبحانه وتعالى يقول سبحانه قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن صالح الصحابه اجمعين عباد الله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداءك اعداء الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين، اللهم انصرهم وايدهم وعاف جرحاهم واكرم نزلهم، ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون واقم الصلاه. Yeah. 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لا شريك لها قدير اللهم في السلام في السلام Oh, my God.